Hello Internet, Shroom here. Happy Monday. Tonight I'm going to be heading into the modern format on Magic Gathering Online. Yes, I'm moving my Magic streams to Monday nights now. Um, there is a link to my Twitch channel in the description below if you want to come out on Monday night and join in on the fun. So um, there's a deck that's been going around. I don't know if it's, people are still playing it, but it was for a while. It's a big black uh, like Cabal Coffers deck that plays like eight Field of Ruins, basically. Four Field of Ruins, four Desolate... Uh, devastation fields and couples it with shadow of doubts and i think shadow is actually a really good card because there's so many greedy mana bases in modern with uh, tons of fetch lands and stuff so tonight we're gonna try to punish those decks uh in a uh ponza type shell in jeskai colors let's take a look at the deck so shadow of doubt is this two mana instant Players can't search libraries this turn, draw a card. So, you know, someone goes to crack their fetch land. We instant speed, two mana, cast Shadow of Doubt. They don't get to put a land onto the battlefield, and Shadow of Doubt replaces itself. So that's really strong. Um, obviously, you know, it's better in matches where there are a lot of fetch lands on the other side. But um, it's usually, that's usually the case uh, that um, most modern decks do play some fetches. Uh, we are combining this with another sort of prison piece, Leonin Arbiter. Is this two mana two two? Players can't search libraries. Any player may pay two for that player to ignore this effect until the end of the turn. So in order to crack their fetches, they have to pay, have two mana available to pay for the Leonin Arbiter. So this is also hate against um, fetch lands. Uh, you would see Arbiter played in some uh, like death and taxes lists alongside Ghost Quarter to like LD people, but um, we're playing this in a Ponza deck. We're all about blowing up our opponent's lands in addition to shutting down their fetches. So what combines well with Shadow of Doubt and um, Leonin Arbiter? Cleansing Wildfire is a two mana sorcery. Destroy target land. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle and draw a card. So it also, like Shadow of Doubt, replaces itself immediately. But um, if we have a Leonin Arbiter, hopefully our opponent won't be able to pay to be able to search for the land. Or if we have a Shadow of Doubt, they just can't do it. And so they're down a land for two mana cantrip which is pretty sweet. Uh, and of course, we have just basic stuff that you see in Ponza decks, four of Stone Rain to destroy lands. Pillaged also can destroy artifacts uh, that can't be regenerated. So we're going to attack our opponent's mana base really, really heavily by turning off their fetches, blowing up their lands on the battlefield, and hopefully just shutting them out of the game. And we're in Jeskai, so we, we get um, some good stuff to support our plan. Uh, Ragavan is a three of, which is a busted card. And um, if we can get him down on turn one and get in a hit with it, that could give us a treasure, which would allow us to play Stone Rain or Pillage on turn two, which is really, really sweet. Um, we've also got some uh, some other kind of Haiti creatures, a couple of Hushbringers. Uh, I just really like this effect um, because almost every single modern deck is relying to some degree on ETB effects, like Pitch Elementals. There's the Samwise Gamgee deck that's going around that needs ETB triggers. So um, I'm including this as a two of just a sort of a preemptive hate piece. Um, three Giver of Runes can protect our creatures from removal and uh, allow them to get in attacks. A couple of Bone Crusher Giants, a Stomp uh, can double as a removal spell. Um, also Stomp makes it so that damage can't be prevented this turn, which can shut off protection from the one ring. Of course, you know, like everyone's playing the one ring, everyone's playing, uh, what is it, the, the orcish bow masters. So yet another good reason to have fresh bringers. And bone crusher giant can allow us to get an attack uh, and deal damage even if the one ring is giving our opponent protection from everything. Um, yeah, and then we've got some removal, a couple of lightning bolts to kill those turn one DRCs and Ragavans. Uh, a Prismatic Ending, which is a good versatile removal spell. One March of Otherworldly Light. I like this spell in Modern because for one mana, it destroys Urgent Saga, instant speed. And of course, we have the stomps off our Bone Crusher Giants. Now, we want a little bit of card draw because we do want to find our pieces. We want to get our Leonian Arbiters uh, and our Cleansing Wildfires going at the same time. So I've got a couple of Serum Visions. I really want the ability to dig deep as, as quickly as possible. And I know, like... I could play Expressive Iteration, but that's just one of those cards that, like, I really hate that card. I don't want to play that card. I, generally speaking, don't like playing cards that are, like, known the best cards to play. I prefer to try to find ways of, like, building decks that work without using those cards. I am a jank aficionado, aficionado after all. It's in my About description. 
So we're running a couple of Serum Powders, gives us that Scry 2 and replaces itself. And a couple of Jace Vrin's Prodigies also lets us dig through our deck. Uh, Jace Telepath Unbound, when we flip this, can let us flash back uh, instants and sorceries from our graveyard. For instance, our Ponza spells to keep the land destruction going. And um, I guess could be a win con in some uh, universe, theoretically, if we're not interacted with it all. Um, so, speaking of which, yeah, we don't really have much in the way of win cons. Um, people will scoop a lot if you blow up, like, three or four lands in a row and they have, like, one land on the battlefield and can't do anything. That often induces a, a, a surrender. But uh, we, we will win by beating down with our Ragavans, our Hushbringers, our Bonecrusher Giants. Slowly but surely, we will get there, our Leon Arbiters. Um, I do have one Den of the Bugbear in my mana base. Uh, there's a total of 22 lands in the deck, um, and... It is kind of a wonky mana base because we do want to have two blue mana untapped for Shadow of Doubt like all the time on turn two. We also want to play Raghavan on turn one wherever possible. And we can't use fetch lands really because we're playing Leonin Arbiters and Shadows of Doubt. So we don't want to turn off our own fetches. So uh, we've got a bunch of fast lands, shock lands, and um, check lands basically a couple of basics a couple of fiery islets because even though the deck only has 22 lands i found myself in in testing getting quite flooded so um added a couple of these hopefully they'll help out mana base is a little painful but um, our plan is to shut down our opponent completely by removing their mana base so um, hopefully th it won't be that relevant um in the sideboard we have one Path to Exile is good against, like, big creatures. Um, this could be a main board card because we do have so many abilities to shut down Searching the Graveyard. But um, instead, I opted to go with the other removal, One Path in the side. Containment Priest is here for, like, Living End, Indomitable Creativity, that kind of thing. Hushbringer number three will come in in matchups where it's good. A couple of Rest in Pieces for Graveyards. Stony Silence for Artifact decks. This is very good against, like, the Samwise Dan... Gamgee combo. It's good against uh, quite a few decks that are popular in modern right now. A couple of Dublin Veto against Control and Combo. A couple of very Time Ravelers shuts down Cascade decks, also very good against Control. One Supreme Verdict uh, to sweep the board against Go Wide decks. That's definitely the matchup we least want to face is like uh, a Go Wide deck, like, I don't know, like Elves or, uh, or Merfolk or something. Those are rough matchups for us. Lightning Helix is a cheap removal for aggressive decks, and one Wear Tear in the sideboard to deal with artifacts, enchantments, Urza Saga, etc. So that is the deck. We are going to disrupt our opponent's plan by blowing up all their lands. We're going to keep doing it over and over, slowly accrue some creatures on the battle battlefield, and chip away at their life total until they either scoop because they can't do anything, or we do get them down to zero life. Um... So that is the deck. We are definitely hoping to come up against like money pile decks. That's that's like our best matchup. Decks that just rely on fetch lands uh, because we can hate on the fetch lands really, really hard and just shut those decks down, keep them from ever playing the game of magic. That's the plan anyway. Let's see how we do in some matches in the practice queue. Again, like uh, I'm going to play the practice queue because it's a little more fun than playing leagues, I find. Um, and there tend to be more varied matchups. If there were some demand for me to start playing leagues, I would absolutely do so. If you really want to see me play leagues, please do leave a comment down below. I will take that into consideration when um, deciding how to do my next modern stream. So let's get into it to matches on the practice queue. And if you like this kind of off melt meta, off kilter MTG content, and you want to support me, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. All right, we're against Blaine87. We're going to be on the play for match number one. Um, yeah, we're going to get some awkward mana draws because our mana base can't use fetches. Uh, let's see. This gives us turn to Arbiter. We have plenty of Arbiters, which is good. We have no red mana, but we'll draw some. I think I'll keep this. Just really hope they don't have, like, a turn one Ragavan or something. That would be a disaster. Breeding pool to elf. Another glacial fortress. Okay. Not great. We got arbiters for days. If I can draw a red source, cleansing wildfire should be really good. Ink moth nexus. Is this infect? Yeah, 
yes, it is in fact. Ooh. This is a bad matchup. This is a very bad matchup. So are we gonna die next turn or the turn after? That's the question. Trade for the Blighted Agent? Didn't think so. Well, they won't be able to crack that fetch on the plus side. Another exalted creature, great. So we're taking minimum of three poison. I can't block Blighted Agents. Only three, wow, okay. <laughs> More red cards. <laughs> Double red, okay. Good. Uh, there's no possible way that we win this race. You are not cracking your fetch lands. Scale up. 6-4. So, yep. That is it. Infect, huh? Okay. I guess we want Lightning Helix. I guess we want Supreme Verdict. Anything that can kill a creature, basically. Hushbringer is no good. Um, all of our Ponza stuff is actually good. Could give her runes. Got a couple of givers of runes. In fact, still a good deck. Nobody plays it anymore, but um, turns out having your opponent start with 10 life instead of 20 is a good strategy. So we don't have any creature removal. I have a turn three Leonian Arbiter Cleansing Wildfire. Is that good enough? I don't think it is. I think I need to have some removal in my opener. Uh, that's a zero lander. Well, I guess this is it. I've got verdict, I've got monkey. Let's bottom planes. And a Guess Sulfur Falls? No, Clifftop Retreats. Pillage. So we can pillage turn two here if they let this attack through. Which isn't bad. See what we steal from them. Vines of Vastwood. Yeah, let's go ahead and pillage. They did get down their hierarch, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? Well, they've only got one colored source of mana, which is good. Shadow of Doubt. Uh, Silver Falls, these these check lands. Blocking with the Hierarch this time, okay. Blossoming Defense. All right, well, that is a pump spell that is not coming at us on an infect creature. No play, okay, good. 
We got Shadow of Doubt to shut down their next fetch as well. But I think I end this elf, right? Or do I wait? Uh, I think I end the elf. Just hope they don't have a fetch this turn. Snakeskin Veil, okay. You have a Maya. Firing up the Ink Moth Nexus. Can I draw one of my oodles of land destruction spells? Lightning Bolts. We bolt the Hierarch. Another pump spell, okay. Gonna continue getting in with the Ink Moth. Can I draw a Pillage or a Stone Rain, please? Well, they're using all their pump spells to keep their Hierarch alive, so that's something. LD spell. LD spell. What is with the flooding? What is with the flooding? This is happening to me last night when I was testing, too. I kept getting flooded. I think I just cycle this Shadow of Doubt if they don't play a fetch this turn. Because I'm dead next turn to that Ink Moth. Fiery Islet. Pillage. There we go. Get rid of that stupid ink moth. Another ink moth. All right, I need another LD spell or we're dead. Giver of runes. All right, um, well, verdict buys us one turn, theoretically. Unless they have another way to save their Hierarch, which they probably do. Uh, I tapped my mana all wrong. I could have... Uh... Oh, they just float. I could have cast my Giver this turn, too. I wasn't paying attention. Not that it really matters. It doesn't matter. If they have any pump spell, we die. Yep. 
That was sad. Uh, Infect's a good deck, but um, we could have done a little better than that. <laughs> that was a poor showing. Mold of five into just flood. But what can you do? Okay, we're against PS neutral grounds. Your deem is too long for me to read it all on the play. Um, yeah, that's a mulligan. We can't cast anything in our hand. His hand is fine. What do we bottom? Jace? Um... I like having Shadow Doubt open on turn two, but I'm gonna play Arbiter, Arbiter on turn two. Don't know if Shadow Doubt's gonna be good. I could bottom a land. Yeah, we'll draw lands. We have Jace to help help us look for lands if needed. Worst case. They are Triome. G L H F opponents. Ragavan, Mox Amber. Okay, turn one monkey is not what we wanted to see. Let's go for Arbiter. Grinding station. Sacking Mox Amber. Boy, they're dirty, dirty deck. <laughs> they mill double expressive iteration, underworld breach. That is wrong. I will have to trade for the monkey. All right, let's go for Sulphur Falls, Giver of Runes, hold up, Shadow of Doubt. There's a Saga. All right, let's go for Jace. Shadow of Doubt can shut down their um, tutoring effects. Doesn't help against the constructs, though. So we do have to do something about that. Actually, I don't want to always yield to that, to Saga. Another Saga. Hmm. So we probably lose to the Sagas. I don't see how you ever beat two Urza Saga. We have sideboard cards. Underworld Breach. Boy. Opponent's deck is dirty. Emery.
Of course, they have the one ring. Which they can... They don't have the mana for it. How is this card still legal in modern? <laughs> it's crazy. Well, they didn't make any constructs. That's good news, I suppose. How many more cards can they draw off Misha's Bobbles this turn? So they're playing, they're winning with Thoracle. And they can make constructs because they keep looping Mox Amber. Um, so they have, like, infinite mana? They can mill themselves infinitely and create a whole bunch of mana. I'll just yield through this, the next end step. We'll see if they have, if they have the win here. They have zero cards in hand. Oh, but they can just play uh they can just play the Thoracle from their graveyard. So yeah, they do they do have the win. They have a Thoracle in their graveyard, right? Yep. Okay, they got it. All right, so we want rest in peace. We want stony silence. Wear tear. Anything else? Containment priest. So that'll exile their creatures if they play them from the gra from the graveyard. Dovin's veto. Cut some bolts. Cut. Um. Yeah. When we make cuts, cut giver of runes. I don't think they interact very much. They have Emery, but that's probably their only ETB cre creature. And her ability is not even that important, so I'll go with one Hushbringer. Cut a Jace. Pillage is better than Stone Rain. Shave a little bit of this stuff. Well, we've got the Cleansing Wildfire. We don't have a Shadow of Doubt or Leonin Arbiter. 
And we've got a bunch of tap lands too. I think this is a mulligan. All right, this is much better. Keep, I think I actually want to bottom Raghavan, as crazy as that sounds. Because I can't play it turn one. Turn two, I want to play Arbiter. So that on turn three, I can Cleansing Wildfire. So, and then hopefully have a Pillage to for more LD after that. So yeah, I think Raghavan gets bottomed. I think so. Crazy as that sounds. Opponent so friendly, hi, GLHF, and then you play that garbage. <laughs> well, opponents. Flooded Strand. Again, with the turn one monkey. Great. So, I guess that means I have to trade my Arbiter for Raghavan. Because I can't let them just run away and make a bunch of treasures. That's really unfortunate. I don't know. I could take one hit from Raghavan. I'd really like to draw Stony Silence. Opponent. Oh, they just have the removal spell. And we missed a land drop. We don't have an answer for Raghavan. It's it's tempting to scoop. I guess I'll play one more turn. Raghavan, still a busted card. Like, <laughs> if it gets a couple of hits in... You just get so far behind that uh, there's no sense in continuing, really. You just lose. Pretty good one drop. Oh, they steal my giver of runes. Now we're definitely dead if I don't uh, find a removal spell right now.
See, this is the kind of deck where you should put notes in, I think, in the tournament queue. Like, I like it when people do that. When they leave a, when they put notes saying, like, play it to your one deck. Um, we don't find an answer for Raghavan. They have the Giver. Uh, I can pillage something, but they're just going to make treasures every single turn. So I think it is okay to scoop in this position. We lose to Raghavan. I mean, they're on the verge of going off, too. They're, like, just about all set up with what they need, so... Yep. All right, we're against P Frannic on the play. Um, I think this is a keepable hand, right? Do you have the Arbiter? We need a red source, but we'll draw one. Jace can help us find one. Excuse me. They have turn one fetch land. Big Noble Hierarch. So is this Yogg? Could be Yogg. Uh, Arbiter? I would like a red source, please. Take one. What is with people in their mana dorks today? The day we want to play Ponza. Everyone has mana dorks. Red source, red source. Thank you. Blow up your land. Sure, let's attack. Yogmoth. Let's play Jace. And a Raghavan. Monkey locked. Yeah, that's what happens when when you don't have the answer for turn one Raghavan. You get monkey locked. Well, they aren't drawing their Undying stuff so far, which is good. Uh, wait, how did they destroy my... How did they destroy my Fiery Eyes... Islet? Oh, they had a besage you. All right, so they're set up with their Yog Moth. Uh, I'm never again gonna have creatures. Unfortunately, we don't have like a. 
Path Exile. Rest in peace. Lightning Helix. We don't have Pithy Needle, which would be helpful. Anything else? I don't think Hushbringer shuts down Undying. Or maybe it does. Maybe it does shut down Undying. We're going to find out. Verdicts. Yeah, we want everything that can kill creatures. So this is one of those decks where it's like, it's hard to make sideboarding decisions because like, kind of everything you have in your main board is needed. Cut a Giver. Cut a Jace. Just shave everything, I guess. Combo pieces. Kind of Raghavan. They have a lot of like high toughness creatures that are just hard for him to get through. We've got Arbiter and Cleansing Wildfire, so I think that's a keep. Is this the first time today we've kept seven cards? There are situations, like we saw last game, where Arbiter can hurt us too. Like, Field of Ruin, people play that card. If we can't pay... We can get screwed over by our own Arbiters sometimes. But we're going to play it. All the mana dorks. <clears throat> All right, let's cleansing wildfire the twilight mire. Whoops. Let's actually do it this way. They'll have to use their food if they want to tutor land, which they can do, unfortunately. But that means the goose won't be ramping them for a while. And let's play Giver of Runes. Let's attack. I need them to not have Yogmoth right now. Grist. All right, let's pillage the swamp.
Let's give the Arbiter Pro Green. And attack Grist. Down to three. Yeah, it'll be a process to kill Grist, but I think I've got to do it, right? I've already made my land drop this turn. Play second giver. So they cannot cast, um, they can't cast Yagmoth right now. With Sejuin, my fiery eyelet. They just plus the grist. That's good. Okay. Bone Crusher's pretty nice. Let's do this again. Let's attack Grist. And then let's stomp Grist. Oh. I didn't make my land drop this turn. Oops. Uh, it comes into play tap too. Man, that sucks. Found a dryad arbor. March. So we can march the Dryad Arbor. And we can play Hushbringer. And let's begin the beatdowns. All right, they continue to not draw lands, which is good for us. More LD, please. Yes. Stone rain. Let's make it rain.
They flow to green mana. Gonna lay an egg. Yep. Do the pro green thing again. Stone Rain. Well, they don't have any lands remaining, so that's not too helpful. But it will be. Pro Green. Cast our Bone Crusher. So we got them on a two turn clock. They can eat food. Orcish Bow Masters. Does nothing, thanks to Hushbringer. Does it give them a blocker? Dina Soul Steeper. Sack another creature. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Sack another creature. She gets plus X plus zero is the sacrifice creature's power. Okay. Now they can actually cord for Yagmoth, I think, which is un very sad. But I think I just have to get in as much damage as I possibly can before Yogmoth does hit the board. So you, Pro Green. You, Pro Green. They just take it. They don't want to block with the Bowmasters, okay? They actually don't have enough life to activate Yogg over and over again, though. So maybe we got there? Yes, all right. Ponded them out. Uh, do I want Dovin's Vetoes? I definitely want Containment Priest. Let's cut an Arbiter for that.
Eh, I think that's fine. So this has turned to Arbiter with the Cleansing Wildfire in hand. I also have two removal spells, so I think that's a keep. And of course they have the turn one Mana Dork. So, uh, I think I have to bolt the bird, right? Rather than playing this tap land. Maybe I'll get lucky and draw an untapped white source next turn. Nope. I could pillage next turn, but they could drop a Yagmoth this turn, and that would be terrible. Clothis, ooh. That's gonna be hard to deal with. That gives them mana. Or just drains. Doesn't give them black mana, though. Yeah, I think we blow up their black source. Yeah, they're using it for mana. Grist. Alright, I do like these lightning helixes. Let's shock. Let's arbiter. Let's cleansing wildfire. We got Jace. I cannot pay to fetch. Okay, they're gonna sack a bug to kill my Arbiter. Pretty much forced to do that. Zolaport Cutthroat. Shadow Doubt would be a good draw. Bone Crusher. I am taking quite a bit of damage. But I think I kill Ignoble and Grist here. Yeah, let's Helix the Ignoble. Stomp the Grist.
All right, they're limited to two mana, zero black mana. They fetched a basic forest. Okay, they're going to start on the drains. Okay, Den of the Bugbear is good. I just play Bone Crusher. We need to get them on a clock. Pronto. continue on the plan of draining and gaining. So Jace isn't going to do much here. Rest in peace. I really should board Jace's out when I board in rest in pieces, shouldn't I? Um, actually, I really like Rest in Peace because it totally shuts down Clothis. It also means I can never transform Jace, but... I think it's important to stop the draining gains, because that will kill us. Jace can just be a chump blocker. I know, it's a non-bow. 100%. He can block a 1-1. One, one. Now Clothless can't do nothing. I mean, he can still loot, like, filter cards for me. He just, you know, can't put anything in the graveyard. But I think I want to keep all those cards. I want... I'm with this land so that I can start activating the den painlessly. Jace, you can stay back. Bowmaster. Ugh, that card is so dumb. Pings down a goblin token. Gonna throw everything. Uh, just gonna chump block the bone crusher, okay?
Jace holding down the fort. Hushbringer. I do want the Hushbringer. One, two, three, four. So I think I just attack with Bone Crusher. Play Hushbringer. I think I'll cleansing wildfire. The black source, draw a card. Destroying my rest in peace. Okay, that happens. We get to make an army. Jace. Whenever an opponent draws a card, except the first one they draw on each of their draw steps. Man, that card's dumb. Okay. So I don't ever want to loot with Jace because it beefs up their army, lets them ping. I didn't leave up Lightning Helix either. That was really dumb. Here's a Yawgmoth. Uh, I'm going to lose because of that. I'm going to lose because I did not leave up a white. No, they don't do anything this turn. More lands are not what I need. Three, four. All right. Well, I guess we're activating the den. So they're going to sack all that stuff to do mean things to my board. So I guess we'll just force the play. They're going to fizzle my lightning helix too. Oh, they let it go. Well, they don't have anything to sack right now. I don't know. They got the active cloth. It's now. I don't think. I don't think this is good.
grist. Possible I should be using Jace. Let's draw a card. Prismatic ending. Get rid of Clothis or Grist? Probably Clothis, right? Uh, let's tap our mana correctly, though. Let's play this land. White. Not gonna have enough mana to activate. Grist, or, uh, Den. White, red, blue. We have figured out how to tap mana. All right, let's flip Jace. Discard Hollowed Fountain. All right, let's flash back Prismatic Ending. Let's kill Grist. Uh, if I attack with Bone Crusher, I guess they can only activate once, so they can make it into a, yeah, into a 3-4, into a 3-2. Then they can just block it and eat it. It's so bad. Um, yeah, I just lose my Bone Crusher. I trade my Bone Crusher for their Insect Token. Is that worth it? No, I don't need to do it this turn. Next turn I can plus Jace on the Yawgmoth. We dealt with their Planeswalkers. Another Grist. Shadow of Doubts. All right, let's plus on Yagmoth. I mean, I think we're going for it, right?
fire up the den. Where to attack is the question. I think the face, right? Yeah. Let's just attack them. Math is for blockers. Gonna kill a couple of my dudes. Because Yogmoth just does that. They take one. Gonna draw a couple of cards while doing so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we can win. I don't know if we can beat a Yogmoth plus a Grist. We need to start drawing some better cards, that's for sure. All of Roots. More lands don't help. Now, I don't think that we can win now. I don't think we can get through their defenses. Um, is there anything in my graveyard that helps? Not really. Cast this just to draw a card. Containment Priest. Play it now. I can play it with the Undying Trigger on the stack, right? I don't know. Just attack them. Bone Crusher. Orcish Bowmasters.
They're going to triple block it. All right, we can containment priest. But they can kill it at instant speed. I'm about to time out here. Why Yagmoth is always such a grind fest. They have seven cards in hand. Oh, uh, ultimate of of a uh, wrist. Whose life equals the number of creature cards in your graveyard? Uh, I've never even seen that used. <laughs> okay. GGS. Well. Yagamoth is a kind of deck that um, you really need to have some sideboard to deal with because it's very it requires very specific answers, um, which we don't really have too much of in this deck. Like Pithy Needle is is a good sideboard card. We did get game two though, so we came close. We gave it a shot. We're against Granos and their Prodigal Sorcerer. Ooh, never seen that art of Prodigal Sorcerer. We're on the play. So this hand has turned one Ragavan, which means it's a keep. Yeah, Yogmoth. Ooh, someone's playing Serum Visions? Nobody plays that card anymore. Yogmoth is always such a grind. Ah, uh, we get to turn two Stone Rain them. That's pretty good. Hopefully, they don't have like Force of Negation or something. Gut shot. Let's shock, and we will, in fact, stone rain. Can I draw another LD spell, please? Ragavan and Stone Rain get. Oh, our opponent doesn't like that. They just scoop. Okay, we saw gut shot. Presumably mean that means they're doing something aggressive, right? So I'll bring in a couple of lightning helix. Take out the hushbringers, we'll see if we uh they just scoop the match. They are salty. I mean, I get salty when stuff like that happens too, but I don't quit. Um you know. Modern is rough. All right, we're against Funky Kilowatt on the play. We've been on the play a lot today. Um, this hand is good if they have fetch lands, so I'll keep.
down our trium. Ghost Quarter. Uh, okay. What do I want? I guess a mountain? Uh, this doesn't let us, uh, shadow of doubt, though. Should've gotten an island. Because now I can't shadow of doubt if they have, a uh, fetch. Cleansing wildfire. Alright, I'll go ahead and play out Jace. So next turn, I can Cleansing Wildfire plus Shadow of Doubt. That's pretty good. Uh, I should have played Fiery Islet. Wow. Playing so bad. I like my hand. I don't want to throw anything away. Field of Ruin. Thalia. That's fine. We can kill Thalia. Actually, no, we can't. So they're a uh, death and taxes deck. Sure, let's just kill Thalia. I can loot away this fiery islet now. I have double cleansing wildfire, double shadow of doubt. Another Thalia? Give me a break. All right, let's just play Leonin Arbiter. Thalia is really good against us. Two Thalias, come on. Solitude. Gonna get our Arbiter. I 
I'm guessing. It's targeting Jace. Um, okay. I can't flip Jace in response. Do I want to loot with him is one question, though. Discard one of these. Shadow of Doubt. Ghost Quarter. Okay, out of basics, but they also don't get to search for land. All right, let's cleansing wildfire. <laughs> Draw another cleansing wildfire. All right, they're never going to have lands. Sure. Let's race. The legend rule in the ganjo. Ether vial. Wouldn't mind finding a removal spell for Thalia. Can I draw a bolt? No. Well, you can blow up your land. Ragavan. I like getting them to tap down their giver. Because one of these days, I will find a removal spell. Bone Crusher Giants. Okay. Let us stomp the Thalia. And let's Serum Visions. Stone Rain Hushbringer. I like Hushbringer. I actually like both of these. Top, top. Play this land, play Raghavan. They scoot. <laughs> okay. So, death and taxes, A. Eh? Give me lightning helix. 
give me Hushbringer number three. Path to Exile. Do I want Wear Tear? Yeah, go for a, go for the Wear Tear. What is not good? Cut one Giver. They also have a lot of like search library effects. So we could get hurt by our own Arbiters. I'm sure they're running Arbiters in their deck. Yeah, something like that. All right, that looks good. Giver of runes. Uh, I think we bolt that. Stone Forge. Gonna grab Cauldra. Sword of Fire and Ice. I can't pillage the sword. Or I can play my island and stomp the stone forge. Yeah, I don't think I need to kill the stone forge. I can deal with the sword a pillage. Killing it isn't going to slow down the sword too much. It also means that they'll like spend most of their next turn just playing, just using the stone forge. Now I get really, really screwed if they have another piece of equipment in their hand, like a like a batter skull or a cauldra complete. But their deck seems pretty old school. So now this turn, I want to Hushbringer. Plus Giver of Runes. Uh, they're gonna end step. To, actually, I I made it, I messed up. They're gonna end step, put it on the battlefield, and then equip it. Oh no, they just had a batter skull. Yikes. Okay, that is bad. That is very bad. All right, this totally wrecks us. Um, this happens when they do damage to a player. Hmm. So, which is worse? Which do I care about more, the giver or the hushbringer? What did I say? That this this uh, 
play line goes really bad if they have another piece of equipment in their hand. I probably actually care more about the Hushbringer. Shadow of Doubts. Now what do I pillage? The sword or their batter skull? Probably the sword. Because it draws them cards. So, um... Yeah, don't let Stoneforge Mystics live is the moral of the story. It should be especially alarming if they fetch something as innocuous as a sort of ice and fire. Fire and ice. There's the Arbiter. Now they can field me and I can't pay for it. We need to find another pillage. And we need to do it quickly. So they have another field of ruin, which means I pretty much have to kill the Arbiter. Sarah Paragon. Okay. Fine. I'm not going to beat that. They just replay everything from their yard. Okay. Good to know they have that card. Let's get the rest in peace in here. Let's get Supreme Verdict. Let's cut a little more of our Arbiter plan. This is one of those awkward mana draws. But I think it's a keep, because we do have two removal spells. Steam vents. Yeah, I want to double spell this turn. Let's serum visions. Not looking for more lands, really. Let's bottom those. Let's play a giver. Thalia. Pillage is good. So let's bolt Thalia.
Archon of Emeria. Great card. I love love be some Archon of Emeria. Let's kill it. So let's Stone Rain. Actually, let's do the Plains. Arbiter. The LD keeps coming. All right, let's pillage their field of ruin. Another Field of Ruin, which they can use. I mean, sets them down a land, too. And let's pillage a plains. Keep finding lands. Lightning Helix. All right, let us draw a card. I keep drawing lands too, even though uh, I bottomed two lands with my Serum vi Visions. They just keep coming. Want to feel the rune again? Stoneforge Mystic. <laughs> they couldn't search their library because of the Arbiter. But what did we learn last game? You do not keep... You do not let Stoneforge Mystics live. Ephemerate on the Stoneforge Mystic. Great. Where are my Hushbringers? Wear Tear. Well, that's good. Now they have enough mana to play Sarah Paragon, which is scary. Skyclave Apparition, okay. Uh, more lands. Man, I've drawn way too many lands this game.
giver of runes. So now I'm looking for a supreme verdict. Could really use supreme verdict. Or I'm actually just dead. <laughs> uh, cycle the triome. Now, if I draw it off this, I won't be able to play it. Cleansing wildfire. Yeah, I'm just dead. Well, that was unfortunate. So game two, we got punished for a pretty questionable play on my part. We got punished hard. Game three, man, that was really unfortunate. We just drew too, way too many lands, totally flooded out there. I mean, it is something to, worth pointing out about this deck. Like, sometimes just blowing up your opponent's lands isn't enough. Like, um, it pays to have, like, win conditions, because as happened in that game, your opponent will just draw more lands if they have a good number. Yes, I would like to play first. Against Bluefur. Kahira, oh geez. Probably blue white control. Well, I got the LDs. Do you need to draw land? Wish I had Shadow of Doubt. This is the situation where you want Shadow of Doubt. This is where it would have been great, but I don't have one. It's just control. It's a ley line binding control. And I don't get a land. Guess I'll try to dash a monkey. There's zero chance of this resolving or connecting. All right, there's counter number one. The only arbiter, which I can't cast. How about some of the lands that I drew last match? <laughs> Can I have a couple of those? Boy, they're just leaving two fetch lands up. Um, so I'm gonna have to discard the hand size here. Uh, I don't think I want to do that because then I'll reveal what I'm doing. There's no, I'm, there's no way I'm winning this uh, from this position. They have four lands. They have a handful of cards. Uh, whatever I discard, I guess March of Otherworldly Light doesn't matter to them that much. Theoretically, chaining off a couple of. A couple of LD spells could be good. I'll play another turn. Archmage's Charm, draw two cards. This is Teferi. Might be Little Teferi. Yeah, of course. Another Leonian Arbiter I can't cast. Okay. That was not meant to be. 
So let's get into fairies. Let's get in Dovin's Vetoes. Let's get in Wear Tear. Let's get in Hushbringer. We can cut March of Otherworldly Light. Cut bolts. Uh, bolts do kill like solitudes and to fairies. Cut a giver. Our Arbiter Wildfire plan, uh, Shadow of Doubt plan should be good here. Cut a Jace. Jace. Cut a Bolt. Cut another giver. Cut a bone crusher giant. We don't really have any way of winning though. And they will they will recover in the long game. Run sixty one. Okay, we have lands. That's a good start. We have a Dovin's Veto. I really would like to get like a Shadow of Doubt. <sighs> I guess I'll keep this. They're mulling. That's good. Um, so I guess I'll just start on Sacred Foundry. I'm going to cry if I draw a uh, Shadow of Doubt on turn two, and they have fetch lands. Okay. Sulfur Falls. Call the Storm Giant. Mm hmm. The Union Arbiter, but we don't have the second white source. Um, let's go for Stone Rain. Almost certainly we'll get countered, but eventually have to get those out of their hand, right? Ooh, they don't have a counter spell up. Okay. Oh, that's a good draw. That is a good draw. Arbiter? Cleansing Wildfire? Solitude. I draw Pillage. Oh, that's a monkey. That is a monkey. Let's play the Eyelets. Let's dash the monkey. Hit with the monkey. Steam vents, and let's pillage. They have a single white mana available. <laughs> they scoop. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I do not feel remorseful. 
doing that to blue white control. Not in the slightest. Okay. Well, let's do that again. Maybe it did happen one time. I don't remember, but it should happen more. Uh, I don't think I can keep this. Just a tap land, turn one, and then praying that we draw lands and cards that are good. Okay, that's a monkey on turn one, so we'll keep that. There's Shadow of Doubt. I think I'll bottom... Giver of Runes? Alright, if the monkey lives, this will be good. Very doubtful, though. Prismatic ending? Yep. Darn it, we don't have mana for- we don't have mana for Shadow of Doubt. We need Raghavan to connect once. Give me a blue source. Leonin Arbiter. They get to fetch out a Triome. And they get to Leyline Binding, I'm presuming. All right, let's go for a pillage. Counterspell. Go for Serum Visions. Cleansing Wildfire, Sacred Foundry. I think I want either of those. Bottom, bottom. Let's go for Stone Rain. The Wandering Emperor. Yeah, this is going to be hard to beat. We will get to LD them again. Probably this turn. Let's see, maybe not. All right, they had Counterspell. So the thing is, we don't really have a way of dealing with the Wandering Emperor. We boarded out a bunch of our removal. So it's very likely this is just going to beat us.
to fairy. Well, Hushbringer is something. It's not much. Probably should have played both out. Um, I don't know what I would be holding Vito up for. The One Ring. Oh, they have Teferi. Yep, this is the innovation in uh, blue-white control now. This card is going to get banned. There's no way this card can stay legal. <laughs> There's just no way. Um. Well, I can stomp to fairy. Um, and do I play Bone Crusher? Probably just to trade with one of those tokens. Line binding, prismatic ending. Double prismatic ending. So we're actually just dead. Okay. So yeah, game two though. Game two. <laughs> game two is like the dream for this deck. Actually, the dream for this deck is like catching a fetch land on um on turn two and then stringing a bunch of LD together in subsequent turns. Or uh getting the stone rain down on turn two after Ragavan. So we went what? One and five with this deck? Um one in five. Uh, we, we had some closest mash matches, like the match against Yogmoth, we actually could have won. Uh, that was close against White uh, Death and Taxes. We had a chance in that match as well. Um, so, I like it. it. When it does its thing, it's fun. Uh, I like the Cleansing Wildfire Leonin Arbiter combination. That's pretty sweet. Um, the mana base is rough uh, because. You know, we, we don't want to use fetch lands. We're trying to have mana for Raghavan on turn one and uh, Shadow of Doubt on turn two. So, I don't know. Maybe the check lands aren't a good way to go. Maybe just resign ourselves to taking a ton of damage and just play strictly uh, fast lands and shocks. Um, it probably needs another win condition. Um because it doesn't kill quickly enough. You know, eventually people will claw their way back into the game. If you don't finish them off quickly, you know, they'll draw their lands and they'll climb back in and, and do their thing. So, that would be a good winning condition. We also don't want to use ETB stuff because we are playing, uh, we are playing Hushbringers. I mean, you could just add like a couple of Planeswalkers, you know, like the Wandering Emperor, Chandra Torch of Defiance. Those could be win cons. 
or you know maybe a couple more creature lands like a uh den of the bugbear is the best in the colors that we're in we don't want to play colorless sources so probably just adding a couple of planeswalkers would be the way to go um and i think i don't know i, I think every sideboard should have pithy needle a modern it's a very important card pithy needle um and it's very versatile you know like it's a good answer to yogmoth um and it's good against blue white control too because you can name those planeswalkers um which can really save you blue white control i always have a hard time figuring out how to board against because oh, i mean obviously you want like the counter spells and the teferis but you can't completely remove all uh all of your burn spells and removal because you do have to deal with their tokens um their shark tokens their their samurai tokens their planeswalkers will beat you so it's rough it is rough but we did awesome in game two we blew up everything we got to see some spectacular ld which is very satisfying to me um, I think there's clear ways to improve it. More wing additions in the main, pithy needles in the side. Um, maybe just like, you know, bigger burn spells to help against like big planeswalkers too. Like, uh, I don't know, Fry might be an option to run. Um, yeah, so pithy needles good against Yogmoth, good against um, blue white control as well. Very important card that I think goes in this sideboard. But that's going to do it for the Shadow of Ponza, as I call this deck. Uh, using Shadow of Doubt in a Ponza strategy. Um, wish I would have drawn this more in situations where it's useful. I think it is a good card in Modern right now. But maybe it's better in a deck where you can force the issue with, like, Field of Ruin. I mean, that's why, that's why the Black Control deck runs this card, is because... It can make people search uh, and shut that down with Shadow of Doubt. So it uses it like very proactively instead of like hoping that it's good. I mean, we can use it. It does synergize with Cleansing Wildfire too, but that's a two-card combination. When it goes off, it's great because you do get to draw two cards as well. But, um, you know, it's probably easier to just run Field of Ruins. But then you can't run the Leonian Arbiters, and it's a totally different deck version. Anyway, that's going to do it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed Shadow of Ponza. If you did and you want to support, if you want like um, off meta, off kilter MTG content, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I will see you in the next one. Have a good night.